What's up, Flick Connection? This is Darren, here to help you get more out of movies, and today we're going to talk all about Wes Anderson and how best to watch his movies. Now first, let's just talk a little bit about Anderson himself. I think you don't need to know his entire life story, but knowing a little bit kind of adds to the experience of watching most, if not all, of his movies. Now, he was born in Houston, Texas, to his mother who was an archaeologist, and a father who was in marketing whose name was, excuse me, I'm going to have to read this, Melver Leonard Anderson. So already the archaeologist mother and the, the three named dad uh, sounds like uh, part of a Wes Anderson movie and in many ways his life uh, impacted uh, his creative process and just the types of stories that he tells. Nah, it's like I can't hear so I don't understand. Son of a bitch, I'm sick of these dolphins. He has two brothers, and his parents actually split when he was just eight years old, and him and his brothers have all said that his parents' divorce was the, the most impactful event in their young lives, and I think that really shows in his work. Almost every single movie of his has either someone seeking the approval of a parent or a father figure. Is there a chemical inside the organism? No, Ned. Actually, it's the reflection of the moonlight on their outer membranes. That's a very good uh, ad lib. Now, he also attended a prep school in Texas where he wrote plays, uh, created some uh, Super 8 films, and his experiences there are partly what he based his second film, Rushmore, on. I love that movie. That's how I first got introduced to Wes Anderson. And it's a really good example of his work. Now, as far as school goes, he actually attended the University of Texas in Austin, where he met one of his best friends, Owen Wilson. They wrote some scripts together. They shot some shorts together, along with Owen's brother, Luke Wilson. You know him as well. Uh, and they shot and filmed a short called Bottle Rocket, about some guys that wanted to, you know, commit this robbery. She's really kind of hot, you know. Mm-hmm. She's an attractive woman. It, it was well received and it was actually featured at the Sundance Film Festival and it was so well received there that they got funding to do a full-length feature which would be the first feature film for all of those guys. Now that is a cool movie that a lot of people haven't seen. If you somehow like feel like you're a Wes Anderson fan and you never managed to see Bottle Rocket, you need to watch it as soon as you finish watching this video. You'll probably have to rent it. It'll be worth the rental. It's by no means his best work, but it's such a good directorial debut. Directors like Martin Scorsese himself uh, became fans of Wes Anderson after this one movie, after his directorial debut. So that says a lot. Clay, look at this guy. He looks like a rodeo clown. <laughs> he looks like a little banana. Where are you from anyway, man? I'm from around here. Now, you probably picked up on the fact that Owen Wilson continued to be in Anderson's work. He's been in a bunch of Wes Anderson movies and actually co-wrote uh, Bottle Rocket, Rushmore, and the Royal Tenenbaums with Anderson. Uh, maybe they'll work together again in that capacity, but that's really where Owen Wilson got his start into the movie business and then we kind of we all know what rabbit hole he ended up going down but because of things like the wedding crashers that he's really famous for i think a lot of people overlook uh his origins with wes anderson by the way if you're in the mood for some sick merch that's also totally dope and super cool you can get this paul thomas anderson t-shirt as well as some other designs I currently have available at our Teespring store. I'll put a link in the description below. Now, if you have watched Wes Anderson movies, even just any one of them, you've noticed one major consistency, and that is symmetry. That is the straight line right down the middle of the, the frame, almost similar to the way I'm set up here. Now, I'm just talking to you one-on-one -on -one, uh, in this YouTube video, but it is an odd uh, format for uh, uh, feature filmmaking, but it plays so well with the way 
Anderson delivers it. Now, one of Anderson's brothers is actually an illustrator, and his work really inspires a lot of Anderson's color palettes, character design, costume design, all of that. And his filmmaking, he really looks at it, even though it's a three-dimensional space, he really looks at it as a two-dimensional work of art, which technically it is. It's on a screen. And he creates it that way in a sense that the camera doesn't move much. You'll notice that with, with Anderson. Now, he does like to do tracking shots. He doesn't do it a lot. But a lot of times what you'll see is a very symmetrical shot. You can just cut his frames in half constantly. Now that you notice that, you will never be able to unnotice it. And you won't be able to unnotice this either. He does quick pans, which essentially means if he's looking here, the camera will suddenly shift to here. And he sort of moves the camera around almost as if he's moving it in a work of art rather than in a 3D natural space that we would inhabit like most filmmakers. He also puts his camera, very similar to mine, at a 90 degree uh, angle from his subject which sounds straightforward, but it is not. Oftentimes cameras are going to be a little higher up looking down or they're going to be lower looking up. They're not necessarily at eye level. You'll notice that in other work and then you'll notice that Anderson does it a lot more than other filmmakers. He's also a fan of the rostrum camera effect. Uh, I did not study film in college, but I'll try to explain it as best I can. Essentially, it's something that animators like to use where they essentially can, uh, it, it's a rig, so it'll be like a flat platform with a camera looking down, and there'll be an illustrative work, like a like an animation cell or some sort of uh, two-dimensional artwork, and the camera can then pan out and move across it just to add some dimension to an otherwise still image. Anderson does this with live action. The most famous example for this is the cross-section boat from The Life Aquatic. But he does this in other films, sometimes as an artistic choice and other times actually as a comedic choice. Another thing he does often is slow motion. Almost every single movie he's done has ended with a slow motion shot right as the credits roll. You'll notice his uh, title fonts are almost always the same. That font is actually Futura Bold, which is also used by somebody else you know. Worth noting, his favorite movie is actually Rosemary's Baby, which seems like an odd choice for Wes Anderson, like I never would have pegged him for Rosemary's Baby. But thinking back, I can kind of see how that movie, and I'm sure hundreds and hundreds of others, but I can kind of see how he developed a style from that movie, just the way that, that the camera moves around that apartment, the way the, the walls are almost all monochromatic, it almost kind of looks like a Wes Anderson movie, a really dark, grim Wes Anderson movie. Almost to the point that, yes, I know his movies involve death, usually at least at one point or another, whether it be an animal or a, or a person, uh, but his movies aren't dark. I don't think it'd be interesting to see him do a dark subject matter like Rosemary's Baby. I'd be real curious to see how he handled that. Nevertheless, if you're a big Wes Anderson fan and you've never seen Rosemary's Baby, you now have to go watch that movie just as a reference point. I will keep making these videos as long as you keep watching them, but thanks for watching this one, and you will see me next time.